Hi there, my name is David Batsoffin and I host a travel blog called Travel and Things. I'm currently doing a series called In Conversation With, and today I find myself in conversation with uh, Rico, um, and uh, we're going to be talking cartooning. Rico, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, thank you. Thank you very much. And I, I'll, I'll see your mug with my own customized Scrabble mug. Cheers. Is R only worth one point? Uh, yeah, sadly so. I should have had to change my name to Zico, then it'll be 10 points. Well, there you go. You see, I've got the Z in my surname, so I think that's often gives you 26 points or something like that. I don't quite remember. Yeah. <laughs> and with a triple score, it's game over. <laughs> <laughs> game over. Well, one surname, that's it. Mm. Rico, talk to me. Uh, people know your work from both Madam and Eve um, and currently um, a lot of the political work you're doing on your own. Chat to me about where you find yourself at the moment. Um, well, at the moment, uh, we, I've been doing Madam Eve now for a uh, better part of 28 years. We started in 1992. So it's actually one of a really long running um, uh, project basically and I'm um, still enjoying it it's still fun um, we still have enough material and then on the uh, and that's what I do with, with the writer Stephen Francis and then um, I basically do my own uh, a wide variety of, of freelance work of all kinds from editorial cartooning to educational work science education children's illustration I like to diversify as much as possible um, you know just to get off out of that mindset of the political satire like halfway through the week just keeps me sane <laughs> in this crazy country, these crazy days. We, we live in interesting times, specifically when it comes to cartooning, um, because you're virtually spoiled for choice at the moment. Yes and no. Um, we've kind of, it's, it's, it's a tough time. I mean, with, with coronavirus and the lockdowns and, and, the, and, the, and the, the world is kind of, it, it's kind of odd. I, uh, uh, there's, for me, there's kind of a line where the, where the world went crazy just after that. I, I attended the book fierce in Stellenbosch, and that was just in the beginning of March, and it was sort of the last normal thing I did in a sense. And then, <laughs> and then the world just went strange. Things just went. You know, it was already the the start of where you're looking at. You know, am I getting on a crowded plane or not to Cape Town and things like that. And, <laughs> And, and then, yeah, and then things just switched around. And for us, um, when, when things just got serious with, with the, the lockdown and, and you know, as, as you realize the, how the pandemic just changes the world, uh, it, it gave us a bit of a shift from Adam and Eve, for instance, because um, everything was just so grim and we decided to go light as much as possible. You know, it's the lighter side of how absurd life is at the moment. You know, every now and then you kind of, kind of sort of, you know, draw and come to a halt and realize just how surreal everything is. <laughs> it's kind of, and, and what's even stranger is, I mean, that's just human nature, is, is how it becomes, you know, the old cliche, the new normal. How so many things are just, this, this, is, this is just becomes normal. And, um, and that's, that's kind of an ad adaptation, but also dangerous in a way, you know, that we kind of accept things and, and, and mm. being, you know, that shouldn't be normal. And I think cartoonists, and, um, are, I think your job as a cartoonist is, not job, that sounds wrong, but, Part of, part of what you do is to make light of or make people just stop and think, you know, is it the new norm? Do we just have to be accepting of type of thing? Yes, it's, it's a balance. It's a striking balance. I mean, we kind of, with, with the editorial cartoons, obviously you look at what's, what's current and try to make fair comment on the situation. And um, uh, now with, with, you know, the inevitable corruption with all the PPE deals, and we kind of gone back from... Uh, uh, struggling with the, the pandemic to, you know, the, the, the sort of the insertion of life, political life as normal in a bizarre way, you know, uh, they're sort of balancing the two. And um, with Madame and Eve being more of a, of a mix, you know, it's social yeah. satire, it's just, just sometimes just the funny stuff and sometimes it's political. So, we, so, so it's, it's nice that we give ourselves the leeway that we can just do something really silly about Harley <laughs> Dars and then also go into, you know, the corruption I cesspit and depress the hell out of ourselves. <laughs> I just want to know if the current PPE situation is masking the real corruption. Um, no, okay. you didn't see. You didn't see what I did there. Come on, Rico. I did. I did. I did. And 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 you get you get you get one point for that. <laughs> <laughs> is that all? Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, it's it's actually very funny because we've had we've had people um, you know there's there's a joke I don't know who said that but somebody said once that comedy is a serious business. It is, yeah. And and if you and if you see and it's it's kind of a contradiction, but if you see people uh, in a room like brainstorming ideas and things, there's actually even funny ideas I'd say with comedy and cartoons and, and often there's very little laughter. There's a lot of that sort of stuff, hmm, that's funny. <laughs> it's kind of, kind of like a, a, a mental game in, in, a, in, a, in a sense. And sometimes you just laugh at your, you chuck with your own ideas, you know. And of well, course, because it's so does. subjective, nobody else thinks it's funny. You know? Exactly. It also happens. I mean, you know, you know who my father-in-law is. And I think, I mean, I've been married to his daughter now, or we've been together for 15 years. And I think in those 15 years, he's used two ideas of mine. I thought they were brilliant. <laughs> He just look at me. Yeah, and then... <laughs> yeah, that'll work. That might work. Maybe yes. <laughs> yes. Um, I, mean, I mean, I get that. Uh, what what has changed over the the decades, in a sense, or oh, makes me feel old saying that. But uh, in, in the old days, when you did cartoons and things, you might get a response. Um, you know, from the the letters to the editor. You know, like a week <laughs> later or ten days later. You know, <laughs> A very specific crowd that actually wrote a letter to the editor, complained or otherwise a compliment. And now with social media, it's, it's an instantaneous roller coaster all the time. You know, you get I should feedback. But now, when you, with that being said, when you look at your final cartoon, do you ever think, hmm, somebody on social media is going to be offended by this, but I actually don't give a rat's rear end? I mean, I, I mean, there's two, there's two things, there's two aspects to it. If, if it's something I've missed, you know, uh, in terms of, of, cause you're very close to what you're doing hmm. and you do tend to work a little bit in isolation and sometimes because of the pace of things, you just miss something and then I'll say, okay, fair enough. You know, I mean, that was a mistake or there's an error and stuff. And sometimes, yeah, sometimes I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily care. Hmm. Um, I mean, we've, we've over the years, I, I know, I, th I think we've developed a very fine radar of, of what works and how to say things or how to express yourself without necessarily, you know, uh, uh, getting that that gut re uh, that wrong gut reaction that changes the, the tone and, and then some people miss the point. I mean, some people deliberately miss the point and will find offense and you can't, that can't be helped. <laughs> Take me back to Rico in high school. What was your matric year like? Oh, terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the, the weird thing is, is uh, you know, I mean, I, I, I drew a lot. I drew a lot of comics, uh, caricatures, you know, school newspaper, that kind of thing. But um, I, I was kind of like a quite a good student up until the point when I got really bored with schooling. And I didn't, I didn't. Funny enough, I didn't do art for school, uh, art in high school because oh, okay. I just, I just didn't. You know, what I was interested in wasn't in any art curriculum. And the same applied when you know they leave school. And then you have to go do, okay, find a real job. You know, <laughs> if you just still want to do the cartoons and the comics, you do graphic design. And I was pretty good at everything except graphic design. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> which didn't help. I dabbled in the arch architecture, which is amazing how many cartoonists have studied or tried to study architecture. Yep. And, um, and then, uh, yeah, then just sort of stumbled my way into, into actually, uh, you know, actually becoming a, a sort of a professional cartoonist in a sense after that. Is there such a job description? I mean, if I was to look up in the book of jobs, if there is such a thing, would cartoonist be a recognized profession? I think it is. You know, cartoonist, illustrator, um, hmm. you know, editorial cartoonists. I mean, it's, it's destructuring like so much else in the workplace these days. Um, that, you know, the formal employment thing of being the staff cartoonist somewhere. Um, I think that's disappearing quite fast. And... Hmm. I've always, um, you know, so 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 it's it's flexibility working for for lots of different forms of media, which most which most you know established cartoonists uh, cartoonists do. But it is a very tricky, you know, you get you get the question of aspiring cartoonists, and so how how do I become a cartoonist? How do I get into the, the media? How do I? And I, I said I have no idea. It's just you just sort of find your way. You might be a brilliant illustrator, but don't have that little bit of that just mentality which, which um, uh, sees humor in things or communicates that humor or it's just off, you know, you have to find resonance with an audience. Yeah. Uh, which, which is sort of the key. Um, and that is the, 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 the tricky bit, you know, you can come up with a cartoon strip that's really, really, you really enjoyed it. We've tried several um, over the years, several cartoon strips um, to get find, besides Madame and Eve, you know, to get syndicated and things. Mm. 
and they've been limited success in a way, but it's, it's, it's a very, very tricky thing. What is the difference between doing a strip like Madame and Eve and doing a single panel? How difficult is it to get your, the mindset to change from where right, I've got three or four um, in a strip where I can expand on the idea as to a single panel where you've got to get it spot on in one, in one cartoon? Um, it's, it's, it's storytelling. Um, it's, 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 uh, firstly, the, the advantage you have with the, um, uh, with the comic strip is it's, it's character based or should be character based. Mm. That the foibles and the, the interaction and possibly conflict or interaction of characters, um, that, that gives you a basis to tell your stories. So X, certain characters will say certain things will take a stance on certain things or so things like, you know, the, the, the generational gap between Mother Anderson and Little Tandy and the kind of, uh, you know, that immediately is, that, that's a dynamic that you can immediately use and, and you know, exploit. Um, while with the single frame cartoon, it's just, it varies. It's also, it, it, is, it is storytelling in one image. You can mm. get an image across. The use, use of symbolisms or uh, cliches or stereotypes. Um, and it's, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's again, it's just telling a story in one image. Yeah. Um, it, can, it can vary from just one single punch to a whole thing. It can vary to something that hits the reader in the face or something you have to go look for. You know, there's, there and then you go, ah, oh, there's the joke. You know, sometimes it's not even funny, you know, and sometimes you're just making a point. Yeah. Or playing with uh, established imagery um, and, uh, you know, just trying, making a new spin on some established image that people are familiar with. Do you find that your Madam and Eve readers are so invested in that particular cartoon that if you leave a character out for some reason in maybe two or three consecutive um, strips, you're going to start getting emails or social media going, what's happened to? Um, yes and no. I mean, I... I I dare say uh, most people don't pay that much attention necessarily. <laughs> it's, just, it's just a kind of like a, you know, I mean, it's not a, an in-depth um, you know, engagement. Yeah, some people do. We have some very dedicated fans and, and sometimes some characters just, just, just disappear or you just don't find use for them anymore. Mm. And um, the dynamics also changed in the, well, the dynamics changed in, 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 in South African humor in general, in the sense that we've become so politicized. Yeah. That, that satire and humor is, is um, really, really, uh, you know, it, it, it's, just, it's just in that political strain. And, and Madame Eve went veered much, much, much more political. Uh, and it was just a, somehow a demand of the editorial environment and, and, and that kind of thing. And, 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 and strangely enough, now with, with, with the lockdowns and, and, and the coronavirus situation stuff, we've kind of gone a lot lighter and played a bit around a bit more. Um, and some of the, you know, I think environment, some of the, the, the sort of uh, um, sensitivities and the, 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 the issues have, have changed. I mean, I'm, I'm using an example of the dynamics of, you know, there's been a discussion about Eva's character, for instance, and that whole dynamic of having a domestic worker work in the house, mm. you know, and shouldn't things change and stuff. And, and the whole thing is that, well, they haven't. And that's where a lot of the frustration and anger that 26 years later, this is still the only employment option for so many women and the, the economic disaster and the corruption and the mismanagement and, and the social changes just, you know, that, that, that is a reality that we, that, that we engage with. Is, is there an average or a typical day in, in your life? I mean, do you wake up every morning going, right, I have a cartoon to do. It's now eight o'clock. I've got to be done by 10. Or do you just sort of meander through it during the course of the day? <laughs> it's a bit of both. <laughs> Depends on the day. Um, there, there, there is a. I mean, the, 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 I've always wanted to, to to start a company called How Long Is a Piece of String, because <laughs> that's the that's the process. You know, you can have an an idea um, with Stephen, who's writing, spending most of his time in New York. We have that six hour time difference, which doesn't sound like a lot, but is is quite a quite a. Um, so we ex ex exchange work mainly via. I take the messages, emails, etc. You know, mm. so it's, it's, it's that kind of, and highlighting uh, what stories, what themes, what works, what doesn't. So generally, yeah. So generally, there's first, first 
it depends how it works. Sometimes we work once a day or we work, I could take a batch and I work a few days a week ahead. Mm -hmm. um, it's become more flexible. I mean, it used to be quite rigid. And I'll tell you the early days when we started, let me see how, how, how life has changed. This was pre-email. <laughs> or And then even years before that, you couldn't attach any sizable image to an email. You know, there was just no bandwidth for that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, so in the early days, it was rigid. We had to do a week's cartoon by Wednesday morning, like, like the dailies. Literally uh, strip up these sheets of photocopies, put them in an envelope, and then go drop them off. Uh, then at the star, at the way they do the overnight bag. <laughs> <laughs> and literally the internal mail that all the newspaper groups had. <laughs> so there were two places we used to drop off. And we used to, and, even, and, and in an emergency, you'd fax something, you know, it yeah. was, was so grainy and, 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 you know, and then eventually we got to the point and then email changed everything, you know, especially once you got to the point where you could, you know, a print quality image could be attached and you could mm. send it and then things just became more and more flexible and they just are more and more flexible. Um, for instance, I'll switch now from the Mail and Guardian to Daily Maverick with the, the weekly, the big weekly cartoon. Um, uh, so towards the end of last year. And, you know, just working for a digital environment is, again, more flexible than when there's print and there has to be a space that has to be filled, you know. That's, yeah. That's, that's, yeah, and, and, and it's a kind of a, but that has, but that's a double-edged sword, you know, the, the, the sort of flexibility. Because um, the more rigid deadlines is a discipline-inducing thing. Mm. In, in a way so when when, when it's more <laughs> flexible then in the last minute you can change ideas and sometimes you're actually working harder because, because <laughs> you should because... you sort of work against yourself i i'm like that with my writing yes. i i and and it was a mutual friend of ours who who sort of pointed this out um bruce dennell when when i used to write for bruce he'd say to me look i'm looking for a story and i go okay i've got i've got this or i've got that he goes fine um, whenever you're ready send it through and then weeks would go by and he'd get hold of me and go, what happened to the story? I said, you didn't give me a deadline. He goes, this, off this is like 10 o'clock in the morning. He goes, this afternoon at 2. I go, cool. Now I've got a deadline. Now yes. I will sit down and write. And you'll have it by mm. 1. You know, I've never missed yes. a deadline. But don't give me some amorphous, oh, whenever you feel like it. Because then <laughs> it's going to be last minute. Yes, that's been, like I could never be uh, like you know, a fine artist where you work towards an exhibition at the end of the year. You know, that'd be a disaster. <laughs> so I like, you know, the, the sort of the time, yeah, exactly. The screen, it's, it's you curse the deadlines, but they're, they're a blessing at the same time. Um, they are, because otherwise we'd all be sitting with half-finished cartoons or articles or photographs that haven't been edited for 10 years. Um, you know, we, I think we all, Rico, at the beginning of this, uh, when it was only going to be 21 days, I think we all thought, wow, 21 days, I can finish the novel, I can at least get my novel to, to a first draft, I can edit all those mm. images that I haven't edited, I can finish the articles that, I, that I've started and not finished. And then you get to sort of day 20 and you realize that nothing has changed. Everything that you had <laughs> 19 days before was exactly in the same place. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, that's, that's, that, that, is, that is very true. Um, I mean, for us, for myself, in, in a sense, the, the, the sort of daily cartooning um, didn't, didn't change much, mm. uh, you know, the actual deadline the, the process. Um, some of the other sort of project, educational projects and, and things, those, those kind of, as, you know, people either saw like, some of the funding just being put on hold for you yeah. know, NGOs and things and then, uh, and then restructuring offices and work arrangements, you know, that, that, that put the span in for several weeks until everybody found themselves how to actually function in this environment. And then a couple of weeks ago, everything was, was suddenly a rush job. So they <laughs> just come off several <laughs> weeks of going, going crazy. And then, but there's, but there's that thing, you know, for instance, ideas, you know, uh, it can be, 20 seconds and you just, oh, that's the best idea, you know, you think, and, or, or you can sit there, you know, chewing over it for hours on end, you know, go yeah. for a walk and you're still not happy. You know? <laughs> and, and then, then there's, there's a, I mean, in some ways, there's an insecure, a creative insecurity at all times, you know, you think like, uh, and, and sometimes it works sort of, you know, you say, oh, this is the best idea ever. And, you know, readers are going, man, you know, it's okay. You know, other ones you go, no, this one, I'm, you know, winging it this time. And then you're like, wow, this is brilliant. This is, you know? And it's so yeah. subjective that people, you know, that some of the sort of, uh, because we have, to, especially with Man and Eve, you, know, you, you literally have to do it every day. I mean, that's mm. 360, 40 cartoons a year. And some of them are just, you know, sort of run of the mill 
pattern kind of jokes and people that's my favorite cartoon ever and i'm going yeah that's great <laughs> I, don't, I don't even remember it you know yeah, but i think every every cartoonist or every person that follows a cartoonist and uh, for me aside from yourselves um with a strip and door fiddler with the single panels uh one of my favorites is gary larson and yes. everybody with almost without exception has a favorite gary larson cartoon I have part of a of one of his cartoons tattooed on my shoulder. It was my very <laughs> first tattoo. Um, it was too small and it's just become a blob. In fact, it doesn't rate as a tattoo any longer and it will eventually get covered over. But um, I'm glad to see that he, for instance, has decided to come back into the digital space though. Mm. Um, not, not in print at all, but, but on a digi digital platform. Yeah, that'd be that'd be quite quite interesting to see what what I mean. He's done a few, so I don't know, I don't know what what what's going to happen in, in mm. going forward and stuff. Um, um, his his style. I mean, I I loved his cartoons. I mean, there was sort of one of the formative ones when we started out. I mean, there was a few that we really really liked. I mean, it was Gary Larson, um, Calvin Hobbes, which is still I think the greatest cartoon strip ever. <laughs> and uh, it took me a while to get into Calvin and Hobbes, but now that I am. I read and reread those on an almost weekly basis. The the yeah, books that I have. No, I, I, I love them, and it's just that's that storytelling, and and, and curiously, he's also uh, the writer. I mean, I mean, uh, Bill Watterson is a very serious guy. I mean, it's mm. quite interesting, and the, the sort of philosophy and, and and behind it, and his writings on it, and and his his sense of purity with the strip. You know, and for instance, he refused to have any merchandising done on it. Um, so every any Calvin Hobbes merchandising is all pirated. He never gave a, he never gave a license to anybody to, to yeah. merchandise it beyond the books and the cartoon yeah. strips. The very purest in the respect. <clears throat> On the other hand, with having the biggest syndication ever on a cartoon strip, I think he could he could afford to, you know, <laughs> purely economically speaking. <laughs> you want a T-shirt? Go and get one printed, but it's not going to have my name attached to it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and then um, and. Uh, yeah, so, so it was those three. It was Doonesbury, it was Calvin Hobbes, and 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 and, and the Far Side. You know, mm. uh, uh, that, those were the sort of the inspirational uh, strips of the time. And and things like Mad Magazine, did that ever come into your into your yes. sort of uh, radar? Yes, no, definitely. Um, um, you had stacks of those things lying around. I mean, I also I also came came from a background of um, as, a, as a child reading a lot of. Uh, of the Asterix, the Tintin. I can see a um, Tintin also, on the easel behind you. Yes, it's a print of a cover, <laughs> black <laughs> gold. And um, uh, yeah, Tintin, and then what was, uh, and then also Carl Barks, the, the Donald Duck, and the, the Donald Duck story is this epic, you know, where they're going quests to the Amazon, all those kind of <laughs> things. I, mean, I, I love the way I used to write stories. I mean, Carl Barks literally, he wrote most of his own. Those, those comic book stories. Right. We'd literally go to the, it wasn't the Encyclopedia Britannica, I can't remember what the, there's, a, there's an American version of it, World Book, I think it's called. Mm, yes, World Book. But you arbitrarily grab one of them, pull it out, open it in the page, and go, ah, Amazons or whatever, you know, kind of like, well, I can write a story on that. And that's how then <laughs> Scrooge McDuck and Donald will go from these adventures. And these, these things are priceless. You know? it, 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 it is amazing what, what sort of, as you say, from a formative point of view, what does and doesn't grab you. Is there somebody, if uh, both either alive or dead, a cartoonist um, that you would like to meet? Um, I wanted to, the, 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 the one guy I was most fascinated with was uh, the French guy, uh, Mobius. You know, he's okay. a science fiction kind of, yes. Yeah, so. And <laughs> this weird situation where I went to the, um, they did. Uh, there's a French publisher published a few French editions of Madame Eve, and you know those album formats. And I went yeah. to the Angoulême Festival, the big uh, dessinée, the big comics festival in France, which is a mind blowing experience. And I wanted to meet uh, Ginger, you know, uh, Mobius, and I went to ask. And and the editor, the French editor, was actually I was working with him. And he said, "Yes, you can come and meet him." And um, uh, then I had to do what endless press interviews, you know, for these, for this. So you go, you know, they fly you over to this event and then you pay through your, <laughs> you know, just for, for the privilege of attending. So, and this went on and on and on. And I went dashing over to the hall to meet him and he said, is he here, is he here? Yes. And there was like 2,000 people. <laughs> like he was such a big star. You know? yeah, I think he passed away two years ago. But he, was, he was also one of the- Rico, um, Zoom for some reason is picked today 
to tell me I have 10 minutes left with you. So I'm not trying to speed things up. I'm just warning you okay. that they're going to cut us. So I'm watching the time so that I can get in a proper goodbye um, yes. without wasting time. So where to, for, where to from here for, for you guys? Um, well, we kind of, uh, we, we, keep, we keep going with like Madame Eve, um, you know, as, as I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of a transformative, very scary period for media and newspapers. So it's, it's, mm. it's kind of shifting and changing. So we carry on as, as long as we have the readership, as long as we have the appreciate, you know, if people still appreciate it, we still enjoy doing it, we'll, we'll carry on doing it. Um, from a personal point of view, um, it's, it's, it's actually very similar, you know, in a sense, you know, it's, 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 it's a time of transformation and we kind of, and I'm not actually entirely sure where, how sort of the future looks in this respect. You yeah. Know, there's, there's a big, um, I'd like to do more children's work if I can. I work for an organization called Nali Bali. And you're familiar with them. It's a reading, developing, reading, development mm -hmm. uh, NGO. We do brilliant, brilliant work. And I sort of created all their characters that they use in their campaigns um, you know it's a kind of uh, well the last there's a whole set of kid children and the, the adults and, and, and just to encourage all the reading and storytelling I'd love to do more of that that kind of work just to step away from the, the editorial um, so I don't know I mean it's 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 at, at the moment we have this weird kind of everything's at hold on hold yeah um, <laughs> it's, kind of, it's kind of a, a very strange thing but I'm, I'm, I'm currently working on Oh yeah, I did, I did a bit of work for for uh, sort of coronavirus and awareness and you know posters and, and that kind of thing, and you know I'm I'm working on some environmental awareness projects, and they're sort of being developed now and for the campaigns are probably towards the end of next year. So I'm actually mm. working on things beyond coronavirus <laughs> in a sense, and it, and it's a very surreal feeling in a sense. You know, so I'm mean, gonna we put masks on characters. No, no, because we're assuming it'll be over by the time yeah. this comes out. <laughs> so, you know, and for cartoonists, it was like, there's a great New Yorker cartoon. Um, I mean, I love the New Yorker cartoons. It's, it's probably some of the New Yorker cartoonists that wouldn't uh, to, to sit in a room with a bunch of them. These guys yeah. would be actually incredible. And um, the, uh, there's one where there's two, two characters walking, wearing a mask, you know, and they usually have the caption underneath, you know, and, and it says, you know, the problem is in, in, this, in these days, the coronavirus, the cartoon, you can't tell which cartoon character is speaking, but everyone's got a mask on. <laughs> Is there somewhere that people can go? Firstly, can people buy your work, the originals? Um, they can contact me. I mean, the, the problem these days, uh, a lot of it is digital. Digital. So yeah. it's, it's a combination. I still draw pen and ink most of the time, but then it gets finished off digitally. Yeah. So it's, it's just for, the, for, the, for things to be editable and, and for the speed of process. You know, so mm. it's half, half pen and ink, but it's never complete. You know, so it's yeah. a bit of a... Some of the Madame Eves are complete, um, just black and white, white line work. The days of an actual one with, you know, when we used to have it scanned and it was colored in colored inks, you know. No, it's, it's, long, it's, gone. long gone. Long gone. <laughs> it's long gone. So, so. But, but you have a Facebook page. You have an online page. I have presence. a Facebook page, yes. Yeah. So I have Facebook is Madame Eve as myself, just Rico, Rico Shachal. Then you just, um, you can find that. Um, you just contact me and if, if it's something you like, you can ask me and I can, I can say, okay, yes, there's actual a, a sellable, presentable drawing. Or, or yeah. sometimes I sell prints, you know, just the digital file that you can print out. You can print yeah, out yeah, yeah. Or, you know, so, so. Fair enough. And every now and then I actually get to, the, to where there's a commission where somebody would like an actual original done in pen, yeah. and, pen and ink and watercolors. And then and I really, it's scary as anything because there's no... There's no control, alt, delete, you know, or whatever. <laughs> control Z, undo it. No, no, not at all. So it's just, yeah, it's just, you're just flying by the seat of your pants and a brush, you know. But it's, yeah, it's, but that's but how it all really started. Lovely. So why not come full circle, basically? Oh, I love it. I mean, it's just living. And that's why I also like pen and ink and, and brushes and things, because there's accidents that happen that doesn't happen yeah. in the digital space. And so sometimes it goes either way, but if it works, then it really, you know, that kind of, you know, that, that sort of, Derek Bauer and Joel Scarf, and, and yeah. you know, that, that kind of, you know, even Dolph's work, you know, there's just things with it that, that the, 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 the proverbial scroll that worked out well, you know, and you're just happy <laughs> with that, you know, <laughs> it's brilliant. <laughs> Which is Swahili for um, uh, the left foot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Rico, it's been a pleasure chatting with you. Thank you so much for taking time out from um, busy deadline schedule to chat to me 
uh, here on In Conversation With. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. And I hope I, I, hope I was making sense. I um, don't know how much coffee it kicked in, but um, <laughs> I, usually, I usually speak through the pictures. So, so um, actually speaking to, you know, trying to put coherent sentences together is, is a challenge for a cartoonist. <laughs>